Right, well, welcome everyone. Sorry, it's me again. Um, but with Sam this time. Or rather, it's Sam with me, I think, because you're first on the thing, you see. So, I know, nice. alphabetical. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, we are talking, uh, going to be talking today about um, distillation technique and how distillation technique can impact the flavour of gin. Um, they don't want to give, because you've got some samples here, um, so I don't want to give away too much beforehand, but we will go into the finer detail. What I can say is that all of these samples have exactly the same recipe and are exactly the same ABV. So the way that they've been made is, is the same, and then there's been one variation um, in those. So I think we're actually going to just jump straight into the tasting. Um, we'll do each sample at a time. I'm not going to tell you what they are until we've tasted through them all. Um, and, but it would be really nice to get some feedback from different people um, as we're as we're going through. So if we start with sample number one. Oh, actually, my apologies, because I've jumped right in. That eager I am to talk about the sampling, Sam hasn't had a chance to introduce himself. So Sam, <laughs> please come and introduce yourself or whatnot. Yeah, yeah, for those sorry. that uh, don't know me, I'm Sam Carlos. I'm the senior brand ambassador for the Bombay Spirits Company, um, based at Labstoke Mill in Hampshire. Uh, I helped set up the distillery uh, a couple of years ago and then work there and basically they, uh, I, I drink gin and I talk about gin, which, uh, oh, by the way, hashtag gin. Uh, <laughs> pretty cool job, best job in the world, um, and help with innovation projects as well. Um, so, yeah, delightful to, to be talking to you all today. Great, and I'm David Smith, and most of you, we've, you spoke, you've heard me speak already today, so I won't bore you anymore. Um, so, the first one, let's have a little taste. And it's probably worth keeping a little bit back so that you can revisit it when you know what everything is. Um, so any initial thoughts on the first one? Well, Alex, you're making that face. You're going to have to tell us what you think. I mean, <laughs> do you play poker very much, by the way? <laughs> Alex? Anyone else? Any other thoughts? Anything? Matthew? Oh, see. Top notey. What's a citrusy? Yeah, pine it's citrus. Yeah. Not very intense. I think no. it would be reasonable to say. That's the first one. So if we move on to the second one, I think it's worth having a nose and then having a taste because. And as I said, all the botanicals are the same, and the quantity of the botanicals are the same as well. So, can anybody see a difference yeah. Yeah. between one and two? Yeah, yeah. pretty unanimous. Yeah. Good, good, good. good start. Good start. Good start. <laughs> it's not been a waste of time. Great. Um, <laughs> any thoughts on the second one? Simon, you taste a lot of gin. Oh, the lady behind you, though. You, you, you're that close to having to answer. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Woody. Taste. Woody. Yeah. And in terms of intensity compared to the other one? Higher. The, the intensity of the play. Or were you talking about alcohol or? Oh. It's one variation, but it's not the ABV. They're all 40% ABV, so. Uh, when you say woody, uh, in, a, in, a, in a positive way or a negative way, like sort of Angelica Rethi or? OK. OK. Uh, uh, yeah. More forward, yeah. I think I think that's yep. fair to say. That's number two. On to number three. Any thoughts on this one from anyone? In yep, the back there. More herbal, yeah, yeah, I think it's one. Anyone else? Yep. Su subtle, less apparent. And where was it? Someone that was. Fresher, was fre fresher nose, yeah, okay. Um, and then moving finally on to the last one. Herbal, yeah. I mean, straight away from the, the visuals, the colours. 
whereas the other three are clear. This one has a little bit of colour to it. I don't know. Sweeter? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Definitely spicier. I think that really, the spice really does come through. Um, and again, so I guess we know that there was a difference between one and two, but do you feel the different, there's a difference there between the wider, the range of them in general, yeah? Surprising difference, given that there's only one variable and it's not the botanicals or the weight or the ABV? It's reasonably so. Um, yes, anything, anything else with regard to the, the taste and the flavour of it? Before we... Uh, number four, more intense. Yeah, definitely a good amount of intensity. So if we talk a bit about the um, botanical recipe now. Yeah. Um, so we've got, um, it, we had um, the, the charge, as it were, that we were using for the still was at 50% ABV. Um, and we had um, six, uh, so, um, but for the, the total, we were using 14 and a half grams for a litre of pure alcohol. So, and we were making two, so we had two litres at 50% ABV, and there was 14.5 grams of botanicals in there, so that's what, that's what we had there. And there was six grams of juniper, six of coriander, so actually equal amounts of juniper and coriander. And that actually, that was my question I didn't ask, did they taste like gin? Because that was a question that we had previously. Generally, did fi people find them ginny? None of them ginny. Michael says, none of them were ginny. What? <laughs> 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 um, a little over a gram of angelica, and then we had some dried orange peel, a very small amount of lavender, uh, black peppercorns, and dried ginger root. So you've got the pepper and the ginger, which I think was what was coming up with some people that talked about the spiciness. So we were trying to hit all five points of, of, of a sort of balanced gin, if you like, kind of pine, citrus, rooty, floral, and spicy. Figured we kind of get an expression of that for each of them. Mm. So, out of interest, because I think just which I'm keen to know what people which one they liked best, because we've had one damn <laughs> few on the gins. Um, but so, who liked the first one best? The second one, and someone that liked the second one. What was it that you liked about it? And anyone at the back here? Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, number three? Okay, and number four. Okay, so there's quite a split between two, three, yeah. two, three, and four, which I think. Put people that like the third one, um, was there, yeah, Charles, did you have any thinking that you've seen? Okay, and the fourth one, people that like that one? Yeah? Yeah, like the first, okay, great. So. The difference that we had was the production technique. And the production techniques we had was one was a cold, a cold infusion, so just a straightforward maceration. It was a 48 hour maceration, so it was a bit of a length of time there, but that was one of them. One was pot distilled, one was vapor, and one was vacuum. Now I guess it's not very hard to tell which one was the... We could do a game here, we? we? could do a game. Do Go a on game. then, Sam. <laughs> Go on, I'll let you. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> So, who thinks, uh, which one was uh, the maturated one? <coughs> Four, exactly. That was an easy one, because of the colour, obviously. Um, which was the vacuum one. distillation? One. one. Very good. Exactly. Very well done. Uh, pot. It was actually three, yeah. Um, three was the pot, and then uh, number two was vapor infusion. So, so that yeah, so that shows you this this sort of variation. There. So, what we'll now do is talk a little bit um, about the finer points of exactly how these distillation techniques work. Um, I think it's probably um, a good thing to do. Um, I think we've established that there's a variation, but just because not necessarily everyone's familiar with exactly how each each um, the um, method works, we'll go, we'll um, cover that a bit. So for the maceration, it was very, very simple. I had, um, a, it was a demijohn that I was using and I put two liters of 50% ABV um, uh, neutral spirit, which I diluted down to 50% ABV. And I added the botanicals and they were in there for 48 hours and then I filtered them out and that was it. And then I proofed it down to 40%. So it was very, very straightforward, the most uh, the, the simplest way of of making gin. Of course, that's just 
gin, it's not distilled gin or London dry gin, it's just gin. Um, we then, uh, going, uh, moving on to pot distilled, which I guess is the next aspect of complexity, and we have this nice illustration here. Aha, does anyone recognize that still, apart from the person whose still it is? <laughs> anyone recognize where that still is from? Jensen. Jensen still. Uh, I guess it, it's a little, looks a little reminiscent to you as well, doesn't it? Uh, I don't know, well, there's that copper at the top, but other than that. Um, yes, so we've got this nice still, um, this illustration of the still at Jensen's. Um, and so this isn't the still that we made it on, but it's just kind of to give you a, because the still we made it on was much smaller, but it's to give you a larger idea. Um, so we had two litres at 50% ABV. Um, we didn't do any... Um, pre-distillation maceration. We didn't crush the botanicals because as much as possible, we were trying to have some consistency. Um, so we just put, put it in there um, and then heated it up and we um, took our heads and our tails cuts and we had our, it was a basically about a litre of heart that we took, which we then diluted um, down to 40% ABV. Um, the difference with this method, I think one of the key things to remember, is that the um, liquid is, is heated and the liquid with the botanicals in it is heated directly. So there is an element of heat that is going to the uh, botanicals and there is a slight, um, and with that heat it, it helps to extract certain oils and things like that as well. So, um, and for some botanicals that works really well and some other ones, it, it, it's, there's a, there's a, um, I, uh, I think with some botanicals, they can stand being heated quite a lot, and other ones might break down a little bit more, but we'll get into that a little bit more in a moment. So that is the uh, cold maceration, and then the pot distillation, and then Sam will move on to the other ones. And then, of course, you've got the vapor infused expression, uh, which was number two. Um, and so, as I'm sure you know, with a rack gin or a vapor infused gin, you don't put the botanicals physically in the alcohol. Uh, you hold them, um, in our case personally, about 25 feet in the air, 35 feet across the still house. In the still use for this, it was a lot, lot smaller, so it was about nine inches. Um, but uh, you simply heat up the alcohol, uh, and the vapor passes up the column around the, uh, uh, the swan's neck, and the linarm into the infuser basket extracts the natural oils and the flavor molecules. Then it hits condenser straight after and condenses back to a liquid. Um, these were all um, single shot gins where they didn't add any other alcohol afterwards. We just wanted to keep them all, all the same. Um, so I think it generally creates a, a slightly, slightly brighter, fresher, more expression of the botanical. Uh, you're not cooking them. You're not denaturing them in any way. Um, it's not better. It's not worse. It's just a just slightly different way of extracting the flavors uh, from the botanicals. Uh, and then the first sample that we tried uh, was the vacuum distillation. So as you can imagine, like Oxley gin, <laughs> and uh, we actually used a, oh, there you go. Uh, we used my rotor evaporator um, that's at Laverstoke. Um, <clears throat> so, because we don't quite have the, the, the advanced technology that they use for Oxley, uh, we used some dry ice. Uh, we all know that water boils at 100 degrees C, right? At sea level. Alcohol boils at about 78.37. Um, but if you boil water at the top of Mount Everest, then it's going to boil about 60 because the atmospheric pressure is lower. Now, with a vacuum distillation, we just take the, the pressure inside the still much, much lower. Uh, this piece of equipment wasn't quite able to replicate uh, what Matthew used to do. <laughs> uh, we were trying, we've, we've got it down to about six or seven millibars before. Uh, unfortunately, there was a leak on the, on the piece of equipment at the time, so we got it to about uh, 80 millibars, which is still fairly good, considering this room right now is about 1,017 millibars. Um, yeah, it got quite low. The point is, because you're lowering the atmospheric pressure within the still, uh, it means that uh, the alcohol and the botanicals can boil at a much lower temperature. So we did need to add a little bit of heat to the, the first part of the uh, rotor vat, uh, about 30 degrees C. We heat up gently, we lower the atmospheric pressure within the still right down, and then uh, it condenses it. We use dry ice, so at minus 79 uh, degrees C, and then it condenses back off. It, was, it did come off quite light in that scenario. Uh, I think maybe it could have been down to the apparatus, perhaps. But also, we did try and keep the, the recipe fair across the board, and we used exactly the same ratio of botanicals. Potentially, I'm quite sure maybe uh, a cold distilled gin might use more botanicals in general than, than a steep distilled gin or a vapor infused gin, potentially. But we were trying to keep it 
uh, fair across the board. Um, so that's a, that's a vacuum, Jim. And I guess the only other point was about when we did the, um, uh, the vapour basket. Um, often, I mean, vapour vapor distillation is far more complicated than I had realised. And when you start trying to do a little bit yourself, you realise that. Um, <laughs> uh, so, and also the layering of the botanicals in mm. the, um, the chamber makes a difference. So to negate that, what we did was we put the botanicals in a Ziploc and shook it up to try and have a bit of a random effect. That's not how you would do it if you were actually doing it in production because you would tweak it to be exactly, you would tailor it to the equipment. Yeah, but well, when we this, make it for Bombay Sapphire, we actually layer the botanicals a very specific way in the basket. Uh, we put the juniper in first, then the coriander, then the four powders, then the angelica, then the lemon peel, and then we sprinkle the grains of Paris and Kuberos on top. We've tried make it in other ways and it makes uh, a slightly different gin. Um, I mean, it doesn't suddenly make Tanqueray 10, but uh, you know, it, it does, it, the, the flow profile isn't, the, isn't exactly the same, so we have to do it the same way every time. But we want to make this fair, so we, yeah, we, we mix up the tankles. Potentially, if we had layered them, this could have been a different uh, I think it would have been. I think it. different flavours would, would certainly come out. Um, and I think well, the other thing I notice in, when tasting these, um, these samples here is that certain botanicals come more to the front with other ones. So I think like, there's definitely some of them where the lavender is mm. much more subtle, and there's ones where the lavender comes through a lot more. So I think the macerate one, actually, you get quite a lot of lavender, lavender which is not surprising because you've got flower petals that are macerating in alcohol. So you're but surely that, that's the exciting thing about the gin category, right? Because it's not just about adding different botanicals to create a different flow profile. You can use different alcohol, different water, different production techniques that we showed here to create a different gin, and different botanicals are going to act in different ways, you know, like you can see here. I think it's quite fascinating. It's not really to say that one is better or worse than another one, because that's not really the point. It's to show that you could actually use them in, in different ways, and perhaps you could enjoy them in different cocktails as well. Um, you know, for me, I don't know about, maybe we could go around the room a little bit, but for me, something like uh, the macerated gin would work really nicely in a gimlet, um, uh, or uh, like a Negroni-style drink. Um, I mean, obviously, they all need to work well as a gin tonic, because if you're a gin, you don't work in gin tonic. Mm. <laughs> Are you really a gin? <laughs> uh, you know, that's probably, what, 80% of how gin is drunk around the world is as a gin tonic, so you need to make sure your gin works in a gin tonic. Um, the vet vacuum, perhaps, a martini, maybe a French 75, something like that. Um, the pot, you know, uh, maybe a Ricky, gin Ricky. Um, mm. What other ones do we have for that? Uh, uh, Ramos gin fizz would work very nicely. Yeah. Negroni as well. And then the vapor, probably like a, a bramble, Tom Collins, you know, um, I suppose actually all, all gins kind of need to work as a Tom Collins. Um, but yeah, there, there's a few ideas. Anybody in the room have any other ideas which, how these might work in cocktails? Oh. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> one, one of the other um, points that I did think of, and particularly when we were trying the pot and the vapor together, is that some gins use, use both. They use pot and yeah. vapour, such as Hendrix, um, use both. And you can kind of see the reason mm. why you might do that. And actually, even like the lemon drizzle we had earlier, they were using pot and vapour distilled um, fr fresh lemon, wasn't it, that they were using. And so you can see how you are getting different flavours for different things. Um, so any questions? Do you think it was a worthwhile experiment to do? Yeah. yeah. yeah? Just to just show the difference between production? Thank you very much indeed, okay. uh, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank, Thank you. you.